Welcome to the third video on block diagrams. This video focuses on parallel systems. So we will assume that students are familiar with the difference between a Laplace transform and a transfer function and also how to form block diagrams for systems in series. This was covered in the previous video. The next step is to consider how we represent scenarios that involve the sharing, addition or subtraction of signals. This video will be looking at sharing of signals. So just a reminder of the notation that we were going to be using. So standard block diagram notation, you'll see we use lines or arrows to represent signals. So here we've got an input signal U of S coming in on the left and an output signal Y of S going out on the right. And we use blocks or boxes to represent systems. And where you see this sort of diagram, it's interpreted as the Laplace transform of the output Y of S is the Laplace transform in the box G of S multiplied by the Laplace transform of the input. So let's look at a different scenario. Here we've got two systems, u equals 5 dx dt plus 7x and 2u equals 60y dt plus 10y. And the main thing that you want to notice here is that both of these systems use the signal u. They share the same input. And we want to ask, how would we represent this scenario using block diagram notation? Here, I've written down the two equations again. So if you look on the left, you'll see it's the same two subsystems as shown on the previous slide. So the top line, we're going to find out what's the transfer function representation for this model. So u equals 5 dx dt plus 7x gets transferred into this relationship here. x of s equals g of s u of s, where g is 1 over 5s plus 7. And then the second equation, the 2u equals 6dy dt plus 10y, gets represented here as y equals hu, where h is 2 over 6s plus 10. And the key point that we, we've mentioned is both of these use the signal u. And we want to ask, how do we write this in a block diagram? Well, the answer is strikingly simple. Here we go. You'll see the input to both boxes is the signal u. So all I do is put a split in the line, or rather um, a takeoff point, so that one line is going straight into H, and that gives me Y, and the other line is going into G, and that gives me X. And the notation we're using is very much like electrical circuits. So if a line is continuous, and you can consider this line here being continuous up to there, but also continuous around here, then you consider that to be sharing the same signal. So when I take a point off a line, and you'll see the arrows are all going in, a, in the same direction, the same signal is considered to exist all the way along that line. So I've got U of S down there and U of S at the top. And having done that, I can just put these two blocks down. U goes into H to give me Y, U goes into G to give me X. And you'll also notice why we've called this a parallel arrangement, because it looks a bit like the uh, inputs going into parallel systems. OK, here's a question to try. Form a block diagram to represent the following set of systems and signals. And note the first step is to find all the transfer function relationships. So um, on this slide, we'll first find the relationships. And the next slide, we'll look at the block diagram. So I'm going to write down x of s equals, and I'm going to get 1 over 5s plus 7 into u of s, and I'm going to call this g u. So the transfer function um, for this top block, I'm going to call g. For this next block down here, I've got y equals 2 over 6s plus 10 into u of s, and I'm going to call this h times u. And so therefore, this bit in here, this transfer function, is h. And finally, at the bottom, I've got w equals 4 over s plus 0.1 into y. And I'm going to call this one my. So 
m is 4 over s plus 0 0.1. So as ever before, the first thing I've done is make sure everything is written in a consistent notation using transfer functions. So I've got x equals gu, y equals hu, w equals my. And my next step now is to say, OK, how do I put this into a block diagram? So here's the answer. You'll notice that if I take x equal g u, then the input signal is u, which means I've also got u down here, which means that this bit of the diagram, u, has got a, represents a line going into g, um, and x comes out. So that's the easy bit. What about the next one? y equals hu. Well, I've got u going into h, and out comes y. So that's that bit there. I've then got y going into m, and out comes w. So you'll notice that what I've got in this slide is a combination of a parallel arrangement and a series arrangement. So y and w are in series, and x is in parallel. So to finish with, a slightly more involved example, but hopefully not too challenging, you'll notice I've now got five subsystems. x equals gu, y equals hu, w equals my, z equals px, and t equals qy. And we want to put this into a block diagram. So what I'm going to do is, um, st you'll notice it's got similar equations before, but u is the main input signal, so I'm going to take u there, and u, I'm going to worry about the y first. So u goes through h, and that gives me y. And then what happens to y? y goes through m, and that gives me w. Now, the other thing I will, you will have noticed is u also goes through g to give me x. So I'm going to put down here g. I'm going to take off from u, so there's my takeoff point. So this is also u down here. And coming out of g is x. So I've now done this one, I've done this one, and I've done this one. So I've now got two left. z equals px, and t equals qy. So x goes here into um, sorry p and that gives me z, and the other expression, t equals qy. So I get a takeoff point from y, put the arrow the same so we can be sure, that goes into q, and out of here comes t. Now hopefully you're all happy with that. I've um, not done anything particularly complicated, just looked at the relationships I've been given, and represented the transfer functions by boxes, and the signals by lines. So in summary, this is where students should be at so far. They should understand what a transfer function is and simple conventions used in block diagrams for signals and systems. They should be able to represent systems in series in a block diagram and also systems in parallel in a block diagram, as well as combinations of parallel and series.